So this is Nick with part four of Terry's Dartfish Analysis. Let's have a look from above at the action. We can see here that the elbow is slightly out, uh, but that margin of 10 degrees one way or the other is really the margin you want to be within. And you're there. It, it can be the, the, the way to um, at least get an awareness of what your elbow feels like is stand in front of a mirror uh, close your eyes, uh, stand on the shot in front of a mirror, close your eyes, move your elbow into certain positions and just before you open your eyes try and predict where the elbow is relative to vertical above the cue and then open your eyes and see if you're correct and just do that for a few minutes to get a feel for what um, the vertical position of the elbow actually feels like. And I found my elbow slid out over time. What I did to uh, I felt it was making a slight impact on the accuracy of my delivery so what I did is as I go down to the shot I lock my elbow to my side as I go down in other words my elbow is touching my side my chest the side of my chest my rib cage as I go down to the shot and that kind of keeps it on the line of aim so really I'm keeping my bridge hand my grip hand and my elbow on the line of aim all at the same time as I go down to the shot let's see what happens here actually on the delivery Elbow stays more or less in the same position. Delivery is pretty straight. Um, now I think that was slightly better in terms of the quality of delivery that we're talking about. Now let's have a look. At, let's slow this down to quarter speed. And I like I like this. Um, backswing actually it's nice and controlled in fact have a look at this backswing here look yeah but still very quick um, from the beginning of the delivery if we see here right that is at the end of the delivery okay here All right, one frame, so it starts moving very gradually. One more frame here, another one here, another one here. So it's taken five frames to reach the cue ball, and then you've got your follow through, obviously. So your hand's probably there at that point. Okay. So let's see what happens here with Nick. Um. So let's go from actually, let's go from the queue. Alright, that's the first one there. One more frame. Just waiting for the first. Okay, it's just started moving there. One more frame. Another one. Another one. Another one. That's in here, isn't it? 
Yeah, so to reach the same point, you took five frames. I took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames. But interestingly, the big difference is here, where to get three four yeah okay so I've taken I suppose my first f well it, the the big difference there is actually the uh, how how slowly the queue starts to move that would be the big uh, the big shift there big difference between both of us and um, I think if we go back Let's just look at this area here of the body to see if there's extra tension we can notice on myself or yourself. Right, let's have a look at this being played. There's a bit of shudder on the upper shoulders and, and lower back. If you just have a look at that again. tense on the shoulders possibly. Same again, left shoulder moving a little bit. I personally think if that left shoulder was not pushed out so much, if it was if the whole thing if there's your arm, if the whole thing was brought back just an inch, I think um I think there'd be less tension in that arm there and that would support the rest of your body in being relaxed. That's interesting. I never realised I could zoom in like that before. I'll have to use that more often. So let's have a look at what I'm doing now. Any movement, any tension? It's much more relaxed, see. The arm is much more independent of the body there, I think you'll agree. Almost like the arm is disconnected from the shoulder, disconnected from the, the rest of the body. And that's partly because I don't need to gear myself up to start the queue moving so quickly. It's a very gradual build up of speed of the queue. Okay. So, what have we got here? What do we have here? We have a long blue. Nose on the line of aim very nicely. Either hands, either side of the line of aim. Let's see if they get, how quickly they get onto the line of aim. They're not there yet, and that's too late. <coughs> Both sides are not yet on the line of aim and they need to be before the hands hit the table so you're still twisting the cue as you get down to the shot that's too late it needs to be done before the hand hits the table now the bridge is on the line of aim the nose still is fantastic the grip hand isn't yet though only only now and that's too late it needs to be all in line before the bridge hand hits the table because otherwise you're just finding the line twice. Once when you get down, uh, once when you stood up behind the shot, and another time when the hand actually is spinning round. Uh, when you're on the table to refine the line of aim, as it were. Anyhow, let's see what happens here on the delivery. Let's just move that. Okay, great. Nice straight delivery. Q is still pointing toward the pocket. Look, very good. And um, you can keep. But I think what's going to help you do that delivery with that quality. I, th I think there the. Um, let's just have another look at that. The chin doesn't look to have been distorted on the backswing. We can use my zoom tool now. There we are. Yeah, look at the chin on the back swing. Mm. 
remains completely motionless and the, and the hand is burying into the chest pretty much on the straight follow through position in the chest. Still a quick delivery to be fair, much quicker than it needs to be, but more control on the backswing. I think that was slower and it meant the chin wasn't following the key off line and the chin and the jaw rather and much better quality of delivery and staying down on the shot good discipline that needs to happen every time well done and that's quite a nice example of getting the cue moving what we mean by what do we mean by getting the cue moving well what we mean is Yes, what we mean is just testing that the cue is moving backwards and forwards in a straight line, testing that you're comfortable with that really. And a good example of that, three, four, five cue actions, just to test it's moving properly as you intend to your satisfaction. And then I think these fingers are nice and loose here now. Look at those, the first finger just moving slightly away from the second finger, so they're nice and loose. I think I get the feeling that this is more relaxed now. And um, yeah, great. What's going to happen on the backswing? This is half speed backswing. Oof, that was very quick. The start of the backswing was great. So if only you could, if only you could, and we'll go normal speed here, finish the backswing. If the end of the backswing was a mirror image, of the start of the first half of the backswing, you'd be great, be perfect. And then if the beginning of the delivery was again a mirror image of the last half of the backswing, everything would be great with your action. It's just that last half of the backswing and the first half of the delivery that are happening about 10 times more quickly than they really should do to be able to maintain control. Because if all the top players in the top 16 spent the same amount of time in the last half of the backswing and the first half of the delivery that you do, the standard of snooker across the world would drop 40%. Or, all right, maybe 30%, but instantaneously. So if it would be a handicap to them, why keep it as a handicap to ourselves? I think I was keeping you at the back there deliberately just as a test to uh, test that the muscle memory is actually there to hold the cue at the end. And this is a good exercise that you can do actually is to separate the backswing from the delivery is deliberately come back, hold the cue at the end, stand up from the shot, do not play the shot. And that will help you feel the ideal quality of backswing for you, your tempo, your rhythm, your sense of control and your cue control. That's the only way to do it really. Completely separate the backswing from the delivery. Look how lovely those fingers are at the end, look. Very open, very relaxed, and that in turn allows all of this to be relaxed, which in turn allows the whole shoulder unit to be relaxed as well. Very, very good example of a professional grip hand there, excellent. So if the back half of the backswing and the first half of your delivery was the same as the top 16 professionals or something like I was showing you, and your grip was doing this on every shot, you'd be so consistent, so repetitive in, in your action, and you'd actually be playing more at your potential because there'd be far less to go wrong than that could go wrong. There'd be much less scope for error with that approach if you had grooved that. Now that is a delivery. Look how smoothly the delivery began. Look, look, look. Right, what we'll do is, if we come back here, look. End of the queue. One frame. One frame. One frame. There you go. It's just starting to move there. One frame.
Oh, well, it wasn't starting to me. I was still holding you, actually. That was part of our drill. Fair enough. But yeah, that is a very good discipline, and one I'd recommend you did as often as possible. A little bit of a correction there on the grip hand before the queuing started. Don't I want to see that got rid of. Yeah, what a delivery. Right, let's go at this again. Right, there's the butt of the queue. One frame. One frame forward. One frame. I think we're starting to move forward here. Okay, one frame. One frame forward. There you go, next frame. Next one. This is great. Very, very smooth. I can't keep up. The gaps are too narrow. That was two actually. So there's one. There's the next one. There's the next one. There's the next one. Now the acceleration is beginning. Excellent stuff. <coughs> Great. Excellent. That is a massive improvement and that's if that's all you did on every sh single shot you played for a year, I'd be amazed if you weren't knocking in centuries regular, providing you were setting up the shot properly and finishing the shot properly like that. That's great discipline. A little bit quick there, but practice this with shots up to 6 out of 10 power, no more, until you can do that. Then practice with 7 out of 10 shots. Just ban yourself, basically, from shots 7 out of 10 power or more. Uh, and um, just ban yourself from them for a couple of weeks, couple of months, whatever. And uh, learn to play the game within your capabilities. And then gradually build up your your control of the queue at slightly increased speeds. What's happening here? That's great. And I think you'll find, I think you'll agree that the whole upper half of the body is much more Look at this now. Look how relaxed this remains now on this delivery. That's much more still, much more stable and uh, you can see you're relaxed here on the first finger that's broken away from the second finger there just shows everything's a lot more relaxed and easy than it was let's have a look at the chin see if it follows the cue to one side or if it remains stable no you see the uh, because the cue's moving a bit more slowly a bit more under control slowly is the side effect control is what it's doing the side effect is it's moving a bit more slowly and because of that, it's easier to detect if it's moving offline. Because of that, it's easier to correct it. Because of that, it's staying on the line. Because of that, the chin's staying in position, not following off to the side. As it was right in the beginning of our videos here. Another one. Nice keeping the cue moving. Well done. Yeah, so much more still and stable in the shoulders. Look at that. If we just... Let's play that shot again. Now put your attention here, in this area, and also here, how relaxed you look here. 
slow it down to half speed <coughs> big improvement big improvement and we're after improvement not perfection so that's a big improvement I'm happy with that very happy with that over time it'll just get more and more refined you see nice keeping the queue moving well done very controlled backswing just like Sean Murphy mind you that was half speed so maybe you're actually double the speed of Sean Murphy let's play that at full speed and see what we come up with yeah a little bit quicker than Sean Murphy on the backswing <coughs> what else do we have do we have any more of these Yeah, very nice delivery. Well done. Good stuff. This is a slightly longer shot. So let's have a look at the chin. Does it stay on the line of aim? In other words, is the cue in under control on the backswing? Little bit moving to the right. I think you didn't pot that one by the look on your face. Chin was moving a little bit to the right. Does it stay in the center here? A little bit to the right there. Yeah, I think you missed that one as well. This is using the 360. And I know you've got one of these, so I'd use one of the, I'd use this for five ten minutes day a day on your home table, Terry, and I, I just think it would be invaluable for you. And this might force the cue to be under more control. That looks pretty good. And actually, there, the look at the bridge hand there, and at the end of the backswing. Look at the end of the backswing and the delivery, the bridge hand and the fingers are still, not like before, and there's much less movement in the shoulders. Uh, look around here. much more relaxed than before and have a look here is the shoulder still and comfortable and relaxed do you think look at the slow build up on the delivery now using the 360 look at the shoulder is it still slow build up of delivery starting now did bend a little bit didn't it as it went through let's have another look at that going to quarter speed on the delivery now let's see if the cue remains intact or does it break and if so is that because of the chin contact or the grip no, it stayed pretty good actually just when it, at the end of the follow through maybe it touched the chin very slightly but um, no, that's, that looks nice and comfortable actually Bridge hand looks pretty stable as well. This is quarter speed, so much slower than it would otherwise be. But look at the cue slowing down there and the slowness with which it builds up. That's pretty good. So if you can play that back on your own uh, computer system, too, I know you've got one at home and you can record back and you get your own analysis software, something like this. If you can mirror that on the delivery, in other words, the queue remaining intact, and just play yourself slow back, slow playback, I think um, you get a tremendous amount of benefit from that. And I think overall what we've learnt here is that, well, to repeat what I've said a hundred times in this video already, which is that last half of the backswing if that's a mirror image of the first half of the backswing and the first half of the delivery is a mirror image of the first last half of the backswing 
you'll be home and dry, I think, on 90% of your shots, but practice with this cue, practice that drill with a cue ball on its own, with some simple parts, build up the speed gradually, badden yourself from power shots, for go, go on a sort of fast for a couple of months, a power shot fast for a couple of months, because I just think it you're stepping ahead of yourself and you end up tripping over by by enthusiasm to go too far advanced. Like I remember when I was learning tennis as a kid, uh, the, the coach said, uh, I said, oh, I want to learn how to serve. He said, hey, on a minute, that's six months down the road. Hit the ball over the net first, might help. So I learned how to do that, and I never did actually get to learning how to serve. But you've already made all your hundred breaks and won your tournaments and all that type of thing, and you've got the muscle memory, you've got the knowledge in there, you've done it all before. It's just a question of remembering it. You don't. It's not even learning it from new. It's remembering it. So excellent job. By the end of the video, you looked really, really controlled on the backswing and delivery. That was a fantastic job. And as I said, if you did that every single shot for a year, it would be very difficult to stop you in Canada. So well done. Keep up the good work, Terry, and a pleasure working with you.